first of all, let me ask, just ask you about these issues with anti-Semitism for a second. Um, yes. You talked about the horror and sickness and disgust you feel watching what the Israelis are doing in Gaza. And I have to say, for me, yeah. just and, and maybe it's just a byproduct of things I focus on, but I honestly don't recall anything that has made me sicker, more disgusted than seeing the level of suffering that's taking place in Gaza right now and knowing that we're only at the beginning, way closer to the beginning than the end. It's one of the worst crimes, if not the worst one I've seen in my life. But when the attack on October 7th in Israel happened from Hamas, what was your reaction to that? Let's wait and see what happened. Well, it was my first reaction. My second reaction was, how the hell did the Israelis not know this was going to happen? And I'm still a little bit down that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't, didn't the Israeli army in those 11, 10 or 11 camps hear the bangs when they blew up whatever they had to blow up to get across the border? Mm -hmm. There's something very fishy about that. Yeah, we had an Israeli Knesset member on who said it seems inconceivable. This is the, one of the most surveilled places on the planet. And there's obviously going to be a lot of investigation, maybe not an honest one, but Israelis are angry about that as well. What I'm asking about, though, is do you think what Hamas did on October 7th can be justified? Well, we don't, A, we don't know what they did do, but do, was it justified for them to resist the occupation? Yeah. But it, again, it's what you said, it's the Geneva Conventions. They are absolutely legally and morally bound to resist the occupation since 1967. It's an obligation. But are there them. limits on the way in which they can resist? I, as I said in the, in the um, statement that I put out after it, I said, if war crimes were committed, I condemn them. I, and, condemn, I don't and, care who it is. Who and here, here war we are crimes. now three weeks or so after. Do you think there's been evidence that's emerged that suggests they committed those? There may have been individual things. What I, I was reading a new story this morning, which uh, Grayson, uh -huh, our uh -huh. friend Max Blumenthal. Uh -huh. So there's a long story which I read this morning, but they've ha Aretz have finally come out with figures of how many people were actually killed and who they were on that they, day. Uh -huh. On that day, yeah. yeah. And so probably the first 400 were Israeli military personnel. Who are? That is not a war crime. No, clearly everyone thinks military officials in, or military targets or soldiers in Israel are well, it depends military targets. if you believe targets. in the Geneva Conventions or not. Or, right. Or the, or, or the United Nations. But what about targeting civilians no, or abducting you, no, them? Course. No, of course. No, of course not. No, right. of course I don't condone that. Or But the thing was was thrown out of all proportion by the Israelis making up stories about beheading babies. They even got the President of the United States, dotard that he is, to claim that he had seen photographs. Of the beheaded babies. Of the beheaded babies. Yeah. And then admitted that he and actually admitted, didn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean you, you know, it's, it's... But what we do know is... Whether it was a false flag operation or not, or whatever, or whatever happened, and whatever story we're going to get to, and we, we don't know if we will ever get much of a real story. It's, very, it's always hard to tell what actually happened. They're calling it their 9-11. What the hell happened on the American 9-11? Nobody knows. The, oh, clearly, the official narrative has huge holes in it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Anyway, let's not go into the 9-11. But, but I guess the I guess the when people there, there are two kinds of people, I think, who raise this anti-Semitism accusation against not only you, but people like you. But let's because say in I your case, one is because government. you criticize the Israeli government. The other is the claim that you seem to value Palestinian lives more than Israeli lives. That's what absolute patent nonsense. That's what I was going to say. What is your Complete how do you say rubbish? No, I don't. All this is the whole point of the difference between my platform and it's the, the Israeli government. I believe in equal human rights for all our brothers and sisters all over the world, irrespective of their ethnicity, religion, or nationality. All of them. The Israeli government doesn't. For instance, just in the in that locale there, what we could call the Holy Land if we wanted to. 
they consider that people who of the Jewish religion have completely different set of rights to everybody else. This is fundamentally important. That's why in my message I go, do you subscribe to the idea of equal human rights or not? Because as soon as you don't, you are a Nazi. And I, I know people, <gasps> you can't say Nazi. No, well, but the right. Nazi ideology is not unique you to Germans. It can to. be anybody who adopts that view that some human life is more valuable anybody than Anybody who others. is a supremacist it is whatever you want to call it, a fascist. Or you just say, oh, he's, she, they are those people who consider themselves superior to us. That's why they call them animals. That's why they dehumanize them. That's why they are committing genocide on them today. I'm sorry to grip my teeth, but I weep at No, it's horrific. You saying I don't... this is the most horrific thing in your life. It is in my lifetime. I'm 80 years old. Mm -hmm. This is the most horrific thing to happen in front of my eyes. And yet, the government of the United States of America, where the I The end live, of the UK. And, and, yeah, yeah, the UK, I don't live there anymore, okay? Right. But, and all the vassal states in, in the, the European Europe. community. Uh -huh are all just giving the Israelis cop why, why? to murder two Why women. are they doing that? Well, you tell me, Glenn. I don't get it. It has something to do with some kind of political expediency that I don't understand. Well, there were, we just had, I just about two weeks ago, we interviewed Professor Stephen Walt, and then yesterday we interviewed Professor John Mearsheimer, both of whom co-wrote the book, The Israel Lobby in 2006, yeah, I'm sure you do, which purported to explain where this kind of influence comes from. And they were very clear that it's not just the standard obvious response of, well, there's a lot of American Jews and Western Jews who exercise a lot of political influence. There's also, you go to Congress, as one of my friends who's a journalist, Lee Fong, did, and we interviewed him last night too, and he went and interviewed a bunch of members of Congress and said, why is your posture that you want to give the Israeli government anything it wants, that there's no criticism permitted, that they'll never say no to the Israelis. What kind of country has that posture toward others? And a lot of them will openly say, it's because we believe religiously that Israel has to be strong because only then can Jesus return and have this like rapture-like so event? they're Christian fascists. They're, well, they're yeah, they're hardcore Christian Zionists um, who right. you, somehow you, are Christians and yet don't value Palestinian life. Well, because they don't subscribe to my view, which is that we're all equal. We're brothers and we're all African. It, it was 150,000 years ago. There were a very few of us, and we were from Africa, and we spread out over this world, and you know. Various of us settled in different places, and because of the weather and because we intermarried, some of us look different from others. But we now know, because of the genome, human genome, we know that we're all cousins. We're all related. And my goodness, um, particularly the Jewish people who claim that their ancestors are from the Holy Land, are incredibly closely related to the Palestinians whose ancestors were. They're all Semites. There are, if they were to have geographical associations with Israel and or Palestine, they're all, they are all cousins, they're close cousins. So this is bizarre. And, and do you know what I think? It's, it simply has to do with wealth and power. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.